Welcome to Bear Archery's Hunting 101 podcast, where hunters new and old come to learn and find inspiration from stories of hunts gone by. Everyone is welcome to enjoy the outdoor way of life, and there is no better time to start than right now. So let's head into the great outdoors with your host, Dylan Ray. Welcome to Bear Archery's Hunting 101 podcast, as always, presented by our good friends over at Scentlock. Um, I've got a special guest, a good friend of mine, Mr. Shane Mowry, the Bone Maniac. Shane, how are you, man? Man, I'm doing great, Dylan. How are you doing today? Man, it is middle of October. Um, we had our first cold front here in Kansas, so uh, that got me fired up. So I am headed out this evening uh, to see if, if if this cold front's got anything stirred up and moving. Um, last year. We had an uh, October cold front, much like this one, um, and I have pictures of my target buck on that day on the first cold front in October, so I'm hoping maybe um, history repeats itself and he shows up again tonight on the first cold front, so um, that would be really cool. Hopefully, that's what happens, so um, you. you have already had an exciting season so far, my friend. <laughs> I'm tired. I bet. I'm I tired. bet. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah um things have been pretty pretty good uh you know uh, just for over the counter tags and and being able to uh hunt some of the provincial lands uh or the tribal lands um yeah since january uh of last well this year um yeah things have been uh been really good and as you know you you've hunted idaho a time or two uh sucks no matter the size of the animal uh don't go to idaho it sucks yeah it's a yeah if you take if you punch a tag in idaho you you've accomplished something you know you really have for sure Um, it's it's big timber it's big land and uh um you know some of the uh, i think it's the eighth wonder of the world myself but you know it's uh, a lot of beauty here it's hard honey no doubt yeah for sure no um it was a rough hunt i you know i was with our mutual friend waylon herzig from uh from ace outfitters there and and you know you can't help the conditions there's a lot of things you can't control and and you know we showed up and and i was rolling into town and i see all these firefighters and helicopters and i'm like that's not a good sign and uh you know you get up the mountain and there was mornings we couldn't see more than 100 yards i mean just there was you know at night you're trying to go to sleep and it looks like it's snowing because all the ash coming down and you know, I, you just, you take away the, the elk's number one defense, their nose, and they don't trust anything. So, you know, no. they just lock up and, and, uh, you know, it was a rough hunt, but still a, a phenomenal experience always is in Idaho and, and, uh, always fun hunting, but Idaho seems to always win when I go there. So, uh, it won't always win. <laughs> it just doesn't like not, you just got to try, you just got to try more, I guess. <laughs> Keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. You, you haven't paid enough money yet. <laughs> exactly exactly that's the hey I, I was telling somebody this morning i was in the gym and and uh a gentleman that i talked to often you know and came by and he's like so how's how's your hunting been man and I told him about idaho and he's like i've always wanted to try idaho and, and i said you know really it, it really is a super affordable state to hunt in um you know your your bear tags are i think one of the cheapest in the country um if oh, i'm not is. mistaken but it, 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 um, it's, it's it's cheaper than any other western state yeah, and and you you'll have to you'll have to correct me on this because I know I'm gonna get it wrong. But if if you have a deer tag, you can fill that on a bear or a mountain lion, correct? Elk tag. So your your elk tag, you can trade that in, um, and and you may have that on a on a deer as well. But you can you can trade it in on a a predator animal, a wolf, mountain lion, or a bear tag. Gotcha. You can use that on. So, well, that's what I was telling that guy. I'm like, that's, it's such a cool thing because, you know, much like my week sucked of elk hunting, you know, if the elk suck and, and, and they're, you just hit them the wrong time of year, you have a tag that you can turn your focus to something else on. And that's something really cool that Idaho does, I believe. Oh yeah, it is. It's uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, we're the only state uh, that allows that. And the bear, I mean, they're abundant. They're, we have a, a large number of bear uh, in Idaho. And it's pretty common uh, while you're out hunting uh, to see a bear yeah. you know, on a regular basis. It really is. Yeah. 
And, and I, you know, I, I love bear hunting. I've kind of, kind of got an addiction for it. And, and, uh, the cool part about Idaho is like 80% of the bears are color face and, and that's not yeah. an exact number. Don't start emailing me saying actually it's 72.5 loser. Uh, it's not an exact number. I'm just saying, um, a very high percentage uh, of the bears are color face. Uh, you know, Waylon was saying like, dude, black bears are what's rare around here. Like, you know, some places sure. you hunt, it's like, holy crap, I killed a color face. Well, here it's like, holy crap, I killed a black bear uh, because most bears aren't black. And uh, so that's what I love about Idaho is, is, is you're shopping for the color of bear you want essentially. And, uh, and that's, you know, what you're hunting for. Oh yeah. Yeah. It is. I mean, I mean, to, to kill a 200 to 250 pound bear, I mean, that's, that's a respectable animal here. Yeah. Um, they don't, they don't get very big and I'm not sure why, because uh, we have a lot of old homesteads, a lot of fruits. Uh, trees there's plenty of stuff for them to eat so um my thought and i could be completely wrong too is is that they just they're always in constant um fight for for food you know yeah. because there's so many of them so um I, I don't know it could be a genetic thing also but um you know I, I have killed some that's been over 300 pounds and uh you know some really nice bear you know right around the 19 inch range um and they're here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, right. There's, there's a ton of them, and you're and you're absolutely right. Uh, black bear are the uh, uh, a full black is that's the one that's sought out because there's so many color phase ones. Now you have had to execute now for a few months, um, and you've already been on a few successful hunts with it. Yeah. First off, what was your first initial thoughts when you picked up that bow? Um. When I picked the bow up, you know, I was actually even talking into the the whole phase with Brian and the engineering department of, uh, you know, going over the specs of the bow. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, is uh, I was like, hmm, I'm really not sure what I'm going to think of this bow. Honestly, <laughs> you know, um, I just really wasn't, you know, uh, with a whole complete redesign. And here I'm thinking man, I really love that EQ cam system. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think it's the best cam system on the market out of any bows, uh, especially coming from the shop side of things uh, and tunability. Um, it's so versatile and it's easy to tune. Um, yeah. And really uh, not to um, encourage everyone out there to go tune their own bow, but um, because there is some brains that goes behind you know, learning how to shim and things like that, uh, and doing twists and whatever not. But uh, with not having a yoked bow, um, uh, you know, I'm I'm thinking, you know, a lot of these changes and the weight, you know, which a lot of people get into that. And I'm not. I mean, I'm used to backpacking here in Idaho, so a few ounces is not going to make or break my hunt. So um, a lot of guys get all into that, and I'm like, man, we're you're complaining over scraps basically, you know? So, um, I really wasn't concerned about the weight of it. Um, because when you put all that together, as far as collectively with the brace height, uh, the Gorman limbs, um, and the whole uh, cam system itself, uh, I'll look at the total package of how it's going to shoot and how it's going to feel. Um, and I, I was thinking, man, I don't, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Um, but when I got it and, you know, put the rest on and I'm examining this thing and I'm like, hmm, it feels good. It feels real good. And uh, once I, I had it all set up with the rest, put the sink on and, you know, and the Trophy Ridge uh, site. And what is your setup? Even, what is your so, setup yeah, real quick? So my, my setup, I just shoot the single pin. Uh, the Trophy Ridge React, uh, the dovetail. I like the dovetail um, for a number of reasons, just so, you know, it's easy to pop off and slide back in. Uh, I like that just for, you know, travel, um, you know, deal and stuff like that. And then the micro sync um, drop away. Um, you know, it's, I keep things pretty simple. And then I just have the tap cam on there. And usually I have the Hitman on there. Uh, but a lot of these hunts that I've been on, you know, since using this bow, things have been really up close and personal. So I wanted to get some real good footage of uh, up close and personal stuff uh, 
because it is tough to even have a cameraman here in Idaho or in Oregon um, where I've been hunting or even in Montana. So it, it um, you know, sometimes not having enough cameras uh, could be a problem. <laughs> so uh, yes. pretty, pretty simple. And then, uh, you know, just a hex uh, deal here for Trophy Ridge on the quiver. Um, and then uh, a couple of these, uh, the sick broadhead with the F2 and I got the F4 in there, two blade uh, deal. So, um, initially when I put all this together and I shot through the chronograph, I'm shooting right around 490 grains, um, 488 to be exact. Um, you know, I'm like, Ooh, it's moving pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, and I think with my setup at 29 and a half, um, you know, I think this thing is maxed out at like 71.2 pounds. I think that's what it was. I'll put it on the draw board or whatever. Um, at 29 and a half, uh, I believe it was 303 is what I was getting. Um, wow. I which, did. I heard, I heard one guy say, I heard one guy say it like this. It's the most powerful bow bears ever made. Um, and that's not just based off numbers. That's like the feel of the bow. Like when you're holding it, it just feels like a power horse. And, uh, he said, it's the most powerful bow that I've ever shot from bear. Um, and he's like, and, and this was Dave from bow hunter planet. Uh, they did their full bow reviews on a couple episodes ago. So, uh, you can jump back there and hear those reviews, but, um, you know, he said, and that's phenomenal because you, you pair that with, it's the smoothest bow that bears ever shot, that bears ever made and, yeah. and that I've ever shot from bear. And so, um, he's like in one fell swoop, bear has given me the most powerful bow I've ever shot from them. And at the same time, it's the smoothest bow that I've ever shot from bears, the quietest and the most dead in the hand bow that I've ever shot from bear. So, um, super, super excited about it. It is, you know, and, I, and the refine, I really like the refine and I, I've taken a lot of animals with that, hunted it a lot with it, shot some 3D courses, uh, to High Sierra course, um, uh, at Lake Tahoe, uh, this past year with it, shot really well with it, um, like that bow, um, and, and, and Dave's right, you know, um, you know, as far as shoot, shooting it indoors, uh, you know, uh, it's quiet, it is powerful, um and you know it's uh there's nothing nothing but good stuff to say about about the bow i think it's smooth i think it it definitely is as far as all the bear that i have shot bear bows that i've shot um even i got an old bear polar too too it's even better than that <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's definitely it's definitely the best bow uh that has been engineered um from bear there's no yeah. doubt about it. Is this the only first off? You're you're talking 32, right? You have the 32, correct? I have the 32. Yes. Okay. Uh, is that the only bow that you've shot from Bear? The and the 30. Year? So just to execute models. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. And which and, which uh, what was the main standout difference between the 30 and the 32 to you? Anything? Um, I tell you, I think the only thing that I noticed difference between the two bows is and people's gonna laugh and maybe you will too but it's like it just feels like I could just fling it around you know it, the smaller bow only it's only two inches or whatever um but uh it's kind of like with the redemption I felt like I could just toss that bow on my back or anywhere I wanted to go throw it around my neck and it it just felt lightweight to me um that's that's how I felt about the 30 versus the 32. But even at 32 inches, you know, I, I like a I like a 33 inch bow. You know, I really was like, eh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna like this bow. Um but it shoots better than the refine. I shoot it better than the refine. Uh my confidence level of shooting this right off the bat, bullet hole in it, as soon as I put it together, I mean like initially when I told John, I was like, man, this refine, it's like it was like the the best bow you produce i did not shoot the refine well um i did not shoot the refine well uh no. don't don't know why don't know what caused it um i i just didn't shoot it well um 
I liked the way the bow shot, uh, but it didn't like the way I shot. Um, you know, I just, and then I pick up the Alaskan at ATA last year and I'd already shot the refined, I already killed two deer with the refined. And I picked up the Alaskan and I said, dude, this is yes. Like the, I need a switch. Um, and so, you know, and that just goes to show you not all bows are going to shoot well for everybody. Um, and that's why, you know, we harped on that in the bow review episode of go to your shop, try every bow out because, you know, just because it's the quote unquote flagship bow of the year or every bow reviewer in the world says this is the best bow of the year doesn't mean that's the bow that you're going to shoot the best doesn't mean that that's the bow that you're going to pick up and go oh yeah that's it like that's the one um so try them all uh because they're all different and they're all going to shoot different and they're all going to like something different about you and you're going to like something different about it so um try them all um before we move on because i'm going to ask you about your season and that's going to take a while uh because you've already laid down a whole bunch of bone which is why they call you the bone maniac uh got to give a shout out to my boys over at arrow junkie um building arrows is my happy place um that's what i do like when i sit down in the evenings uh to to watch tv i like to build arrows and do that like that's just it's fun for me um it's a stress reliever i, I love it um you get to create something Arrow Junkie gives you all of the tools that you need to build your own arrows. They also have some sick apparel. Happen to be wearing one of their shirts right now. Um, I happen to be because I wear them almost every day because they're so cool. But um, listen, I, I I like companies that say, hey, you should build your own arrows. Um, but not only we think you should build your own arrows, we're going to give you all the tools to do that. So um, I would highly encourage you to go check out Arrow Junkie if you're into building your own arrows. And if you're not, start building your own arrows because it's fun. Um, Shane. What uh, what was the first animal you killed with the uh, execute? Uh, elk shot an elk with it, so I was uh, that was pretty quick. Uh, first day, uh, first morning in Oregon, um, spotted a bull. Actually, spotted we thought was nine bulls, um, and uh, it was like six hundred forty-seven yards, um. It's a far shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even at the execute, I mean, I, I was like, man, I really hope, I really hope we can get this in. Man, you know, 12, but, twenty uh, clicks and, and up. You know. Twenty clicks up, twelve clicks to the left. Let her rip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I had the uh, the Vortex uh, Fury with my uh, built, you know, the built-in range finder. Man, it it it, it worked yeah. out beautiful. <laughs> but uh, no, we put a game plan together. Uh, and I had a bull spotted out, and he was actually at the tail end uh, of all the other bulls um, that were in there in this drainage. And the wind was perfect. Uh, everything was in line to uh, put on a perfect stock, especially early season, because season comes in. Um, I believe it was August 27th in, um, in Oregon uh, for archery. And uh, still hot. So Colin, uh, with you know, they're still bashered up. You know, it's not. It's a spot and stock type move. We're out in the uh, high desert there around the Pendleton area. And, you know, it's just, you know, the area that I was hunting on the Columbia Basin is, is just, I mean, it's just flat out ground. You know, it's barren ground with the dra drainage of CRP and, you know, some junk pine laying around uh, in there. But uh, spotted these bulls um you know early on and i tell you it was the wind was in the favor everything was right uh stalking from 647 yards where, where i uh spotted him at uh i shot him in his bed at 22 yards and that's um, awesome dude it uh and i and i actually you know a lot of a lot of folks um we'll start with putting out some little filler uh, video clips because some of these episodes will definitely be on wild TV. Um, but I shot him with the mechanical, uh, the S, uh, the sick um, F2. SK2. Yeah. So I shot him with that. This is the first bull, and it'll probably be the only bull that I ever killed with a mechanical broadhead. I, I did it just because here in Idaho, you know, we're allowed to, Illegal to now. use those. But even at a uh, this is this is something that, to be said with uh, with 
with guys, not that it will not kill an elk. It's, you know, not that any mechanical will not kill an elk. And, and I tell you, these SK2s are deadly. I've killed plenty of whitetail muleys with them. And I would have never have any reservations about blowing through one of those animals around the 200, 250 pound mark. Elk's a different story. Um, but even at 22 yards, um, you know, uh, with the, the serious Apollo 204s is what I was using, like I say, right around 488 grains. Um, I got about, I don't know, 22 inches of penetration. I buried it right underneath his last rib, right in, and it's stuck the bottom of his heart. So, um, having said that, you know, it's, it's a tough, tough broadhead, you know, but, you know, you're losing some kinetic energy, you know, especially yeah. with a tough hide uh, with an elk. Um, but like I said, I, I just wanted to have the, naysayers you know I, I just like doing things that people say can't be done so i did it and with that um it, but I, I you know i can't i can't say that i would do it again you know using a uh, a mechanical on an elk um just because what, i you know what is your go-to what is your that? go-to bro? What is your go-to? My go-to, yeah, the go-to man is uh, is the F4, the sick F4, oh, the yeah. two blade, and these, I don't know, these things are like butter, man. I just blow through everything that I shoot, um, and I've killed several elk with these. Uh, the the last elk that I shot was with this one, um, uh, with that broadhead. So I, I have no reservations of shooting anything with that. And actually, that was uh, the second shot of my bison with the sk uh was with with that that brought in now did you uh so um, have you shot the new razor heads yet i have i actually killed a bear with that with that uh razor head so um <clears throat> out of your recurve yeah out of my recurve it's there in the recurve it's still got the bloody arrow on it so what do you think of those uh, what do you think of those broadheads um they're nasty they they really are nasty. I mean, I I shot that bear at a frontal and I shot him right in his chest. Uh and it I think he ran maybe I don't know 15 yards and let out four or five uh gut wrenching death roars and uh that was it. You know, yeah. so um they are they are pretty nasty. Um with with a uh, traditional setup um, you know, I would shoot them real. I, I would like 125 grain. I would like to see 125 grain to shoot off of my compound, you know, yeah, um, for sure, you know, but, uh, but you know, that, that 175 or whatever, uh, on top of with that trad bow, um, you know, it's a, it's a heavy FOC and it, she, I mean, I'm like it. 29 draw and it's just right at 69 pounds on that sk so um, yeah yeah i mean it it's That's nasty pushing but it. I, yeah yeah you know now, i was now i know you have a kodiak hunter as well yeah um i'm only a 28 inch draw and on my kodiak hunter i'm pulling 55 pounds and i was shocked to be getting uh, 174 feet per second out of that bow that that was a torch and arrow and and uh i'll tell you i did go into that elk hunt um thinking like man i have no reservation to shoot an elk with it um mm -hmm. flying fantastic I, I love the way that bow shoots um but i am really fired up for the fred eichler signature mm -hmm. series too yeah i i i like the hunter i i've always liked the sk model um i i like how it feels uh the grip is a little bit too bulky for me on on know, the hunter. I shoot it. I shoot it good, but I don't shoot it nowhere near like I do the, um, you know, the SK. Um, I I've never been a fan of a takedown. I like them. Um, they're easy, they're versatile. You know, you can pack them around. It's really, you know, those are the good features about it. Um, I I I just like a solid bow. Yeah, you know, that's concerned. Um, no, like for sure. You know, it. You know, so. I, I love the aesthetics of it. I mean, I love the the beauty that's that's in it, and I mean the old school tradition that that it 
you know, represents. Um, but at the same time, like you said, I love breaking down a, 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 a takedown and putting it in my backpack and flying on the plane with it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, really that. no, that's, that's a good thing to have about, about the, uh, you know, any takedown, you know, as far as I was concerned. But, um, now, what other animals have you shot with the execute? So I took a muley and uh, with it, uh, one bear and another elk here in Idaho. So uh, I've taken four animals with this thing in what just a little over a month and a half. So Good Lord, um, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm out of tags. I told you on the phone. <laughs> I'm, out not of even, tags. I'm not even. <laughs> I'm not even going to call you a hunter anymore, dude. I'm just going to call you a killer. Uh, yeah, they don't call me. My wife, she's like, you've hunted more this this year than you you have in a long time. And uh, I said, that's just because I got a new bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, um, you know, it's. Uh, I, I mean, I I started off killing, you know, using everything with uh, with the trad bow, and I I love shooting things with the trad bow. I um I enjoy the compound. Now my kids, you know, I, I actually just became the uh, the Northern Idaho uh, regional guy for S3DA archery. So I'm the I saw that. Congratulations, so, man! I saw that. Uh, yeah, it's um, I, I'm 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 really proud to be a part of this organization and you know help getting the kids involved in that the community. I mean, we're you know Idaho's a big uh, hunting community and and. <laughs> I haven't really even started advertising a lot. Just, you know, a lot of people here that, that know us here in, in town. Um, you know, I think we have like almost 20 uh, participants already. And it's just, I mean, I haven't even begun to get the word out in the schools. I got to meet with the superintendent uh, to go over all those things. Uh, so I'm thinking once I do that, then I need to start recruiting uh, some coaches um, and things like that because, you know, it, it it's going to have uh, my hands full with, you know, around yeah. 20, 20 students. So two of them being my kids. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's good. You know, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, and just a different, uh, mindset, you know, of, of, of just the, uh, you know, teaching the kids, uh, archery versus, you know, just coming in the shop, buying a bow and, and, you know, sometimes you, you're like, well, uh, you know, I hope that parent teaches that kid right, you know, that, that type of deal, you know, because I don't want them to get just, it's kind of like taking a kid fishing and they don't catch any fish, you know, yeah. and they don't want to go fishing anymore. So, um, you know, I think with what the program has to offer and what we're going to be doing, I think, uh, I think kids are going to really take a liking to archery. And I know a lot of the, you know, the parents around us have been ecstatic about you know, having this offer to, you know, I have, uh, I've been talking a couple times on recent episodes about taking my boy hunting. Uh, he's only four and, and I've yeah. gotten a lot of questions and comments and, and not concerns, but, but what are you going to do if you don't see deer? Um, how are you going to keep him interested if you don't see deer? Here's how I keep him interested because we've been out twice and we have not seen deer. Um, we saw a bobcat that fired the kid up. Um, we it. saw, we saw a porcupine and he wanted to chase that mug down and kill it. And I'm like, dude, you go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna hang out here. Um, so oh. I kept him fired up about those types of things. Like I would get him super excited about a squirrel. Like I would say, dude, look, there's a squirrel and like try to build him up on that. Um, yeah. and, and try to get him excited about that. But I think more so than that, I'm showing him trail camera pictures. So I'm saying, dude, look, there were deer here you know, three hours before we got here and two hours after we left. And, you know, I'm trying to, trying to teach him like, dude, there's deer coming in and out of there and we just have to be there at the same time and, and, and showing him those types of things. And so he's really grasping the fact that like, okay, they're there. We just haven't seen them yet. And, uh, and so I'm also getting him involved in the process. Like you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having him go out and I'm having him help me hang tree stands and, and when I say help, obviously he can't help me. He's four, but he's gonna um, understand. He's he's understanding yeah. the process, and that that keeps him engaged because he's like, dude, we just put this blind up three days ago. Now we're hunting in it. Like he gets it, um, yeah. and so that's what I would just tell you. Like I've gotten that that question so many times. Like, what are you gonna do? 
are you going to keep them engaged and excited if you don't see any deer? Um, well, get them excited about other things, um, like a bobcat. Um, he told everybody, I saw a big old bobcat. Like he, he was fired up about that. But get them excited about other things. And then keep them involved in the process. Don't let them just think like we're going out here and we're going to see deer um, because that's a, a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. On every time. It, it, and it's a whole learning curve, you know, because you, you learn so much just being observant um, out there. You know, you, you may be deer hunting or I may be elk hunting, but at the same time, it's like I'm learning about something else each time that I'm out in the woods. Yeah. Uh, no matter what I'm doing. Um, and it's a process and I'm, I'm out, you know, if I, if I'm not hunting, then I'm taking guys out. So, you know, um, or, or we're prepping for the next hunt. So it, it's, it's a 24, 24, seven, 365 deal, you know, all the time. Um, you know, so it's, a it, it's, it's absolutely what you said is it's process. And, and the more people understand that, the more people learn from that, um, the better you'll be. Now, we have talked a lot about the new bows um, and getting new bows and being, you know, excited about new bows. Bear Archery has an exciting new promotion. They have partnered up with Pope and Young um, to give you a free membership. Bear Archery is going to buy your membership to Pope and Young. So if you just got a new Execute, if you just got a new Adapt, if you just got a new uh, Legit, you name it, whatever bow you just bought, uh, or if you just bought a new Recurve or Longbow, all you have to do is register that bow at beararchery.com. They're going to send you an email, and you're going to get a free Pope and Young membership. So even if you bought your bow a few weeks ago and you're like, oh, crap, I didn't even know that was a thing, go register it. Go register it. You'll get a free membership to Pope and Young. Uh, or if you're looking at buying a new bow this year for Bear Archery, make sure and get it registered, and you'll get a free membership to Pope and Young, um, something exciting that Bear Archery is doing. What is – what's the best – I don't want to say best um, – because that's not how we judge animals and, and judge our hunts. Which hunt was most spectacular? Like which hunt played out the best with that new execute this year? Um, let's go with the cha most challenging one. And I, because I broke a mold that typically I never break. And my rule of thumb with elk, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not a trophy hunter. I'm a tag puncher and I think everybody knows that. So it's, um, I don't, I don't always get fixated on one animal and be like, ha, huh, yeah, I got to kill the biggest on the mountain. Um, I think a lot of folks, uh, get wrapped up into that social media for one gets people thinking that, Oh, it's easy for these guys to just go out here and kill these monsters all the time. No, it's not. Especially if you're not willing to put in the work. Um, and uh, I broke away from that mold on an elk uh, here in Idaho uh, during bow season. Um, the, the day that I got back, because of such a quick hunt in Oregon, uh, a couple of my trail cameras went off. And I had a bull that, you know, the biggest bull I ever shot. It's been a 305 five point. So, um, you know, <laughs> in 36 years, you know, that, that I've been chasing elk. You know, um, yeah, that was good. It's a good bull, you know, especially for a five point. But um, this bull was like, I, I put it in my head. And I, I mean, even to this day, it's like, we'll show pictures. Like, it was a high 350s bull. And I'm like, wow, for where I hunt, this is a solid animal. This is the bull that I'm going to be going after. Um, next morning, I was in there and I was after this bull. Uh, as soon as I got back uh, from from Oregon, um, and I'm cow calling, you know, and uh, I, I don't ever, there's too too many yahoos out there just tooting their horn. So uh, I don't ever just try to locate, you know, in, in some of these areas for one, and there's wolves everywhere. So, um, so, so you got to start being methodical about how you're calling in these big turkeys, right? So, um, uh, I get him into 80 yards. He does answer me, comes in and tries to check out everything. There's two wallows that I knew that was in the area. Um, I had him at 80 yards broadside and I don't know what was with me at that time, um, but I didn't shoot him. Um, and it, I mean, 80 yards, I mean, that's 
something I practice all the time is like, because we will get long range shots here uh, in the West and I'm confident at 80 yards. Um, and I've taken animals that far before, or even, even further. Um, but uh, I didn't shoot. Um, I'm thinking no, I'll get, I'm gonna get him closer. <laughs> well, that was the only opportunity I had at that bull. Um, and I got fixated on that bull for the rest of archery season. <laughs> Uh, only calling in, you know, I called in, I think, nine bulls, uh, and most of them were raghorns, uh, a couple spikes, and I passed them up and thinking that, okay, I'm in the wheelhouse of this bull. I'm calling in, you know, all his satellites and surrounding uh, bulls that's, uh, that's, that's trying to mess with his harem. So um, to make a long story short, I never got another opportunity to shoot shoot this bull he was there but he was always you know always a day in front of me or odin had a football game a couple times and like <laughs> the camera would go off on that wallow i should have been there to kill this bull so lesson learned um i should have just never uh, broke the practice of kill the first bull i call in because that's normally what i do actually that's all i ever do um <laughs> and so uh that's haunted me, you know, up until just, you know, the last of the season. I said, you know, the next damn bull calls in, he's toast. Well, he was toast. <laughs> so um, it, it was, it was the bandana, but that was, that was probably the bittersweet uh, hunt for me using the bow um, because I put more effort into killing one animal than, than I typically ever do. And I think a lot of hunters get wrapped up into that because they'll see, They'll see the guys that, you know, I, I, let's just say I'm gonna call it what it is that has endless amounts of money to go out and hunt one specific animal. Well, yeah. you know, as, as as everyday people, you don't have endless amounts of money to just go on extravagant hunts or and kill the biggest on the mountain or or that. So, um, you know, you you gotta you gotta put things into perspective. And I yeah. got away from that on this hunt. So and it'll never happen again. <laughs> now I am, uh, you know, I, I tend to be the one that, that holds out too much. Um, you know, I, I tend to be the one that, you know, I'll send videos and pictures of, of bucks at 12 yards to people. And they're like, dude, why didn't you shoot him? And I'm like, it's not the one I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's maturity. I don't know if it's lack of time and, um, you know, wanting to spend more with my kids and, and having them out there with me. But I just told my wife, I said, you know, I, I have no desire this year to kill a big buck. And that's mm -hmm. weird. Like that's, you know, that's, it doesn't sound right for a hunter to say, I have no desire to kill a big buck. I just want to go out and hunt and enjoy hunting and shoot whatever the heck I see, you know, that makes me happy. Um, yeah. and so I feel sorry for the first 110, 120 inch buck that comes out because it's toast. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's the mindset change of, of switching to hunting with a recurve. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, but but there are just, I don't know. And maybe it goes right back to normal next year. And it's like, you know what? I want to kill a giant. That's all I want to kill. Uh, but for this year, it's like, man, I just want to kill something. And, uh, you know, not in that sense of like, I just want to, I just want to get blood on my hands. And uh, not, not not like that. It's just like, man, I just want to enjoy hunting and, uh, and be out there with my kids and get my kids involved. And, and, uh, you know, I told somebody, I'm like, dude, I'm going to stack as many bodies as I can, uh, on does this year, because that's a great way to get my kids out there and a great way yeah. to get my kids involved. And, you know, I, I, I counted it up the other day between Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and, uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. Yeah. Between those, I have like 12 doe tags or 14 doe tags or something. And uh, I'm like, you know, that's 14 deer that my kids get to be around being killed. Yeah. Like that's, that's worth more than me shooting one buck by far. Um, and the problem is, dude, like sometimes, <laughs> you know this better than I do, but there's been times where I'm honed in so much on one buck, like here in Kansas that then I don't mm -hmm. even get to go and hunt in Missouri 
or then I don't even get to go hunt in Oklahoma or well, vice or vice versa. Like there's one in Oklahoma that I'm driving to spend all my time trying to chase in Oklahoma and I don't even get to put in time here in Kansas. And it's like, dude, I would rather kill six 120 inch bucks than one 170. You know, like, I don't know, maybe things have just changed in my life. I don't, I don't know, but, um, that's where I'm at this year and I don't really know why, but, uh, that's where I'm at. Well, I, I think, um, uh, and maybe I can answer that for you because I think it, in general, you know, things fix itself. Uh, I think so, social, I mean, I, everybody knows I, I hate social media. I do it because I have to. Um, and you see things on social media and it goes right back to like, you see, you see folks like shooting big animals. Well, there's a reason why some people shoot big animals. Um, it, it, it's just not because they're a better hunter than anybody else. Right. Uh, it's most of the time it's their wallet is a lot bigger than ours. And that's, that's, that's the bottom line. That's the truth. Um, and that's why I say, you know, if you were to hunt big timber, like you have, I mean, 74% of Idaho is public land. Um, and it's hard hunting. Uh, so no matter what you take in these woods or in these mountains of Idaho, you killed a trophy. You took a trophy and it was a good hunt. Um, no yeah. doubt about it. Um, and, you know, and that's the same way with elk. It doesn't matter if you kill a spike. It's still a trophy. I mean, getting off of the rule of thumb of killing the first one. The the experience you get of killing a cow or even killing a cow. I mean, people don't give elk enough credit. I mean, their olfactors, as far as the receptors in their nose, are almost... Uh, you know, they're, they're right around 320, you know, a deer is like 270. So, I mean, they smell way better than a white-tailed deer. Uh, they're smarter than a white-tailed deer. Um, you know, so it's, they, they know you're there before you even get anywhere in the vicinity of smelling where an old bull elk laid around and peed on himself. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're gone, you know, that's just, that's elk, you know? Um, and then a bear, you know, is like 2,100. You know, so that bear smelled you two miles away. So, any, I mean, it's, uh, you know, mule deer, you know, right around 300 too. But it's like um, deer here are tough. Any animal here is tough. So, um, that, yeah, it's just Western honey. You know, uh, I, I, I kind of say Idaho is a little special just because uh, um, it's not really the animals that kick your butt. It's the terrain. Um and the animal on top of it, you know, it, it's a, uh, it's just tough all the way around. But um, I, I always tell folks, if you if you want a great hunt, come to Idaho. You're going to get a good experience. But if you're looking to punch a tag, go to Colorado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you <know>? so, <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it, it, I guess the point I'm making is, is like so, social media hasn't done any uh, uh, anything but di uh, discredited. Uh, yeah. The, the whole thing of like, hey man, shoot what makes you happy, you know. It, now it there's, really and there's you know? absolutely nothing wrong with holding out for that one seventy no. or, or that that one buck that you've been chasing for five years. If you got all some or all season to do it, and that's what yeah. you want to do, that's that's your uh, prerogative. No there's doubt. absolutely nothing wrong with it, man. You know, I, I know guys who don't punch a tag for five years because they're only putting their tag on that one buck, and that's it. Yeah. And uh, and that's fine if that's what that if that's how you want to hunt if that's how you want to use your tag that's fine i'm not saying there's any right or wrong way about it one of my good friends uh his name's alan bolin you know he spent 100 plus days on a doll sheep hunt and he's not letting one rip unless it's what he wants he's like did i pass up 17 legal rams but it's just not the one i want and i'm like if that's what you want man like go for it uh yeah. you're, you're not right or wrong any way you do it um i'm just i'm just at a point in my life uh, where things are changing and, uh, you know, I could care less what the loud mouse on, on social media say, um, I'm going to shoot well, whatever the crap makes me happy. Never kill anything anyway, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. That's what makes me super happy, dude. Um, you know, you, you, you I, I got somebody who ran their mouth on me because I was setting up a blind, uh, telling me I'm unethical, uh, and I'm unsportsman because I set up a blind. Uh, if you want to do it, learn how to be a good sportsman and, and, chase them in the woods and i'm like okay well first off taking my four-year-old hunting hot shot so let me see you stalk a whitetail with a four-year-old um but also 
And then I go to your page and I haven't seen you kill anything in nine years. Um, so you keep trying, yeah. dude, to spot and stalk whitetails in Kansas. Um, I'm not saying it can't yeah. be done. I've got friends who do it, but um, definitely not with a four year old. I have friends who do it. So, um, no, Shane, I'm I'm big on on my field notes, man. You know that uh, Fred Bear was big on field notes. I like tips and tricks, uh, things that I can take myself and make myself a better hunter with. Uh, the listener can make themselves a better hunter with. What's your one hunting one hundred and one field note you've got for us that I can that I can put in my back pocket and pull out on a rainy day? Uh, as a hunter, you know, um, and I say this, and I teach my kids this too. You know, each time we go out. Um, and I think we, we kind of summed that up a little bit, just, you know, just talking with your kid too. And I'll, I'll, I'll use this one because, you know, I, I used another one on the last podcast, but on this, I have a list of field notes too. And I go through and I, <laughs> the one field note that I, uh, that I disregarded, um, cost me a, uh, an animal <laughs> you know, for a long time, <laughs> you know? So, um, I, I think, uh, the the best thing that I could say is anybody out there hunting, you know, the field note is uh it's just going with your gut. If if um if you're in a situation, we'll use this as a situational purpose, not not necessarily uh if it's gonna make you a better hunter, but it maybe will um make you look at things a little differently as far as far as perspectives. Is uh is going with your gut while you're uh in the tree stand or or while you're um, you know, setting up on a spot and stock or something like that. If, if, uh, if that hunt is, is, um, is going to make you happy, so to speak, as far as like, man, you know, I think because a lot of times that since we're talking about that is I think a lot of times folks question like, wow, ah, should I really do it? Because I get this a lot, uh, especially if I take hunters off, should, should I shoot it? And I'm like, I'm not here to tell you you should pull the trigger or not. My job is to put you on an animal. So uh, if that's going to make you happy, then you need to shoot that animal. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's what a lot of people I think um, goes through in their mind is is being able to be and I and I hate social media for that because I feel like they have to be accepted to what somebody else is doing. Well, the only thing you need to care about is what's what you're doing um and as a hunter i think that is as long as you're being ethical and you're able to uh to do things within that legal right of taking that animal then you need to do it you know so um th that's I, I that's my first gut instinct all the time is like if is is like if you have you know um a protocol that that you do like mine is i call it i shoot the first bull i call it I broke that protocol. So that's a mistake that I made this year that cost me more time. Um, you know, I could be doing some, I could be hunting something else. So um, uh, I think it's just good, good instinctive hunting. Uh, and that could be, that's broad, you know, uh, yeah. that, that, and that's, that's what it comes down to all the time. You know, uh, I mean, I, I hate to say it is I just feel like we live in a world of, uh, you know, keeping up with the Joneses even more now than than ever before because everything's at our fingertips. I mean, uh, you can't even go out to dinner anymore, um, and that's all you see is is phones. I mean, it's just it's it's horrible. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's not the next best thing. It's really not. You know, right. so um, I I don't know. I don't know if that that's a field note or not, but I think my field note is is uh is is just you know just live by this live by this one rule yeah if all you're worried about is the picture you're going to take with that animal you're doing it for the wrong reasons well it, well exactly you know and and i've noticed um you know in the past 15 years uh you know license have gone up um Everything has gone up. Has the quality of management, per, you know, in different states? I mean, I, I guess on paper they can say that it has, but I'm out here every day and I don't see no huge wildlife habitat things going on. What I do see is hunters like you and I 
whether, you know, we put in a food plot or I put in winter wheat or I put in alfalfa or, or buck for joats or whatever, you know, uh, on my own property or your own property or, or leased land. Um, we're the ones that make the difference. Yeah. You know, um, when it cut, when it's all said and done, you know, and, and I see tags going up and tags going up and X amounts going to this and X amounts going to that. But like, you know, let's say for instance, you know, Idaho has been fighting since 1995. So as they, we introduced wolves to this state, um, you know, the decline, well, it, would it take 30 years for you guys to figure that out? That they're just going to decimate the herds. Um, and it has. So, uh, you know, there's like huge bounties <laughs> on yeah. wolves, you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. That's a whole nother topic, you know, just, uh, yeah. just proper conservation, you know, it's, uh, it, I don't know. I, I guess you can have an argument to you blue in the face, but, um, I don't, I don't know if there's ever a right or wrong answer. Right. No, that is, uh, like you said, that's a, a whole nother wormhole and, uh, we'll save, we'll save wolves for another episode, but, um, <laughs> You know, uh, before we go, I got to give a shout out to my friends at Alaskan Guide Creations. There are very few things that I live with, and that is a bino harness. Um, I'm the kind of guy, if I step foot outside, I've got a binocular harness on my chest. Um, if I'm checking trail cameras, hanging stands, putting up a ground blind, whatever I'm doing, just shooting my bow. Every time I go to shoot, I put on my bino harness. I just love it. I love having it there. I love having the tools I need right there. Um, and I have long since, um, for the better part of five years, been a huge fan of Alaskan Guy Creations. That's all I've worn for <laughs> very particular reasons. They are fantastic. And uh, if you are in the market for a binocular harness, I would highly, highly encourage you to check out Alaskan Guy Creations. Guys, thank you for listening. Y'all have a fantastic week.